Railroad Revolution, how to play. So to start, you're going to set up the game. Uh, you're going to create a supply for the money, the Western Union shares, and all of the specialized workers. Then to set up the board, the first thing you'll do is arrange the city tiles in their stacks that correspond to the city level. Shuffle these and then place them randomly on the board based on their number. Next you'll place two rails for each of the, or one rail for each player in the starting location. You'll notice these two cities do not get a city tile because they always start with a pre-printed uh, bonus for that city. Uh, at the start of the game all players are connected to both Charlotte and Washington and can build out of those. An important concept of the game is there is no blocking so each player could have a rail in each of the spots as well as a station in each of the cities. Next you'll shuffle all of the Western Union tiles and then place them where there's not a pre-printed location on the board so this wouldn't get one. So shuffle these and place them now. Once you've placed all the Western Union tiles you'll now shuffle the deal stack completely and you'll reveal the first one. Also, all players will get a marker on each of the three performance tracks starting at the base level for each of the tracks. Also, if you're playing with less than four players, you'll use a non-player color to block some of the first station uh, bonuses. In a two-player game, you're going to put one on San Diego, Salt Lake City, Duluth, and Little Rock. If it was a three-player game, you would put one on San Francisco, Bismarck, and Houston. We're also going to put some down on here. In a two-player game, we're going to put a uh, kind of a blocker on the first, the fourth, and the seventh spot. If it was a three-player game, we would put one on the second and the fifth spot. Next, you're going to create the supply of trains. Uh, there are f five types of trains in the game, but the fifth type, every player is going to get as a starting train. So there's going to be four types of train in the supply that can be chosen. Uh, and they're all the same, so just organize them by type. And you'll always use one more than the number of players. So since I'm setting this up for a three-player game, each of the types of trains, uh, I'm setting this up for a two-player game, each of the stacks will have three tiles, one more than the number of players. Next, you'll sort and shuffle all of the milestone tiles based on their type. The A1 and A2s are given out at the beginning of the game, so you'll give each player randomly an A1 and an A2. Those are public, and these are now removed from the game, since we're only playing two players, and the B, C, and D stacks are available now in the supply, shuffled and sorted. You'll now take the starting bonus tiles, and shuffle these up and randomly uh, place them out, randomly selecting a side and selecting tiles based on the number of players. So I'll randomly select two and lay them out. And then what we'll also do is for each of those, take one of the four starting colors and then randomly put those also. So in this example of a two player game, these would be available for selection to start the game. And I randomly put a specialized worker on each of those. The left, each player, after setting up their board and putting their starting rails, should have one rail and one station left. These are only used if they correspond to a starting tile that a player selects. If they don't select one that requires a rail or a station, just return these to the box. For each player, they're going to get a player board. 
they're going to lay out all of their stations and rails in the corresponding spots on the board. Each player will start with $600 and three Western Union shares. You'll remember that each player got randomly an A1 and an A2 milestone tile to start the game. They start with four unskilled white workers and each player starts with the starting train face up. The final part of setup will be to randomly select the first player. Let's say yellow was randomly selected, so they'll be the start player in the game. And then now in reverse order from the last player uh, to the first player. Now play will proceed clockwise from the starting player. So the last player and now working back to the start player will select one of these starting tiles and take the worker and immediately apply the bonuses. Let's take a quick look at these since this will be the first decision you'll be making in the game. So if a player selects this as their starting bonus tile, that is take one of the train tiles. One thing to keep in mind is players can have multiple of the same type and there are no limits to the number of trains. So they'd add it to their starting tile. Here if they select this starting bonus, they can exchange one of their unskilled workers for any of the colored skill workers in the supply. Here they can move up three on one of the performance tracks. And keep in mind you can split those, so you can go three up in one track, or one in each, or two in one. You can split those however you fit, see fit. Or you can take three of the Western Union shares. On the backs of each of these are also potential options. If the player took this starting bonus, they would immediately place one station, and this, these use the extra stations for this. They would place one station on a city that they connect to. So that could be Washington or Charlotte to start the game. The X means you don't have to pay any expense, but you also don't trigger any bonuses for that. It just gives you the option of establishing a presence in a city. The same for the Western Union. You would take one of your stations and place it anywhere on the Western Union track. Uh, remember, this does not block placement of any other stations. It just blocks um, the ability to get the first player bonus to place there. So you could take a station and place it there. Again, you don't pay any costs. You also don't trigger any bonuses or anything like that. Here, you would take one of the rails and place it immediately um, without paying any cost and without triggering any deal bonuses. And you can build it off anywhere where you have rails connected. So you could build out of Washington in any direction or out of Charlotte in any direction. So whatever starting bonus is selected, it's immediately applied. You take the worker that corresponds to that, and then you're ready to start the game. And these are discarded. So to play the game, play will proceed clockwise from the starting player until the end game is triggered. So players will each take their turns going in, in clockwise order. On a player's turn, they simply place one of their workers on the available four actions. The station, the railroad, the telegraph, and the trade action. There's no restriction, so they could place a worker here. On the next turn, place another worker and another worker. Uh, they're not blocked. This is their own player board. They can place as many workers. They can take the same action over. Um, the only thing is if they don't have any workers in their supply, that's the only time that they clear all their workers off and then immediately place a new worker. Now, once a worker has been placed in a location, they're not allowed to use that worker to take another action. They've got to take from their available pool. Again, unless all workers have been used, then you'd clear those off and place the worker. A couple bonus actions you can always do on your turn. At any point, you could exchange a Western Union share and turn that in and get $150. You could also pay $800 to get a worker, uh, any color of your choice, any specialized worker, and immediately add them to your supply on your turn. Also, at the end of any player's turn, if you've satisfied one of the milestone 
um, objectives, meaning that you've promoted the colored worker, the specialized worker, and you've satisfied the requirements of the milestone, uh, you can turn those in. A big part of the game is determining which type of worker to use for the action, because in addition to taking the base action, the type of worker you choose will enhance or provide bonuses to the standard action. So when I say um, a color worker, I'm referring to a worker that has a specialty versus a white or an unskilled worker. So the, the different types, purple are the foreman workers, orange are accountants, the grays are negotiators, and the blue workers are engineers. It's also important to remember one of the rules is at the end of your turn, you can never have less than four workers uh, in, your, in your pool, either on your board or in your supply, because there are actions that allow you to discard workers, but you can never go below four at the end of your turn. Another important concept is you can resolve the effects of an action in any order you choose. Uh, so you can actually use the rewards of an action to help pay the base cost of the action. So it provides a lot of flexibility, and we'll actually demonstrate that when we take this first action, the station action. All right, so let's go through each action. The first one is the station. So on this player's turn, he takes one worker and takes the station action. You're going to take the leftmost station from your player board and place it onto a city that you're connected to via one of your rails. So at the start of the game, I can choose Washington or Charlotte. So here's an example of where, let's say the player only had $200. The cost of the station in this example is $500. You'll see station costs will range from about uh, $150 all the way up to 500. If this player only had 200, the, b the benefit for placing first, that's what that symbol means, is I get two shares. I could take these two shares, turn them in for $300, apply that to the cost of laying the station, and then I would only owe 200, which is what I had in my supply in this example. All players start with 600, so it's no problem. So you put your station there. If you're the first player person, to place the station, you get the left side bonus on the city tile. And then in subsequent turns, if a player came and decided to build a station in Charlotte, they would not be the first player, so they wouldn't get the left side bonus, but they would get the right side bonus. But in this example, I am the first player to place. I'd get the two shares, and I'd get my choice of a purple or a blue worker. Now the bonus actions for the station, um, the unskilled or white workers, you'll see it's the same for each of them, allow you to promote one of your workers to management and place them on a milestone tile. And this can be used with the, the white worker or any of the other color workers. If I was to use a purple here, I could choose, do I want to get the purple bonus associated with that worker or do I just want to use the generic bonus. I can choose to do that. The promote action lets me take one worker anywhere in my supply, even if it's been placed on a board, even if it was the one actually just placed, and promote them to a milestone. You can see my starting milestones require an orange or a gray worker, so I don't have any to promote at the time, but if I did, I can take one of the workers and place it there. That's considered out of my supply, and they're locked on those milestones. So I've got to make sure that I don't go under four workers uh, when I'm taking the promote action. But let's cover the different bonuses. If I was to come here with a purple worker instead of the white, in addition to the base station, I could flip one of my train tiles by paying 100. So I'd pay 100 to the bank, and I could flip one of the train tiles, immediately take the benefit, or let's say I did that on a pass turn, I could flip this back over and make it ready to be reused again. At the end of the game, only face-up tiles will earn you the eight victory points on the tile. 
and then once they've been flipped once, they can't be used until they get unflipped. An orange worker placed on the station action would allow me to take the station action without having to pay the station cost associated with the city. If I was to use a gray worker, I'm able to place a station and still get the first player bonus, uh, even if it was already occupied. So let's say the red player used a gray worker to take the station action. They could put a red station there and still get the first player bonus of the two shares, even though somebody else was already there. In this, ex in this example, let's say I placed a gray worker here so I could get the first player bonus. I am the first player, so I would actually get this twice. I would get it once for being the first player, and I would get it again for using the gray worker in this example. And then finally, the blue worker allows you to pay $300 and actually get the benefit of the city, the right side benefit. You'll see kind of the frame icon around the frame there. So what that does is by using a blue worker and placing a station, I could pay 300 to get the city bonus a second time because you would get it obviously the first time by placing the station and then a second time if I used a blue worker and paid the 300. Keep in mind you can always only ever have one station of your color in a city. So once I've placed in Charlotte, I can no longer place in Charlotte. I've got to place in other cities that I'm connected to. All right, let's talk about the next action is the railroad action. By placing a worker here, I must lay two pieces of track. And that's an important point. When you take this action, you must be able to perform the action in full. So let's say this was later in the game and I only had one rail left. I could not take this action because it requires me to lay at least two rails. So this action, I lay two rails. I pay 400 as a base cost for taking the action and then I pay an additional 100 for each hazardous terrain um, icon that I lay the rail on. So again, I always take from the leftmost portion of my board, and I would take these rails, and I could build out from any city where I had a connection. I don't need a station in the city, so I could build out of Washington, and they don't have to be contiguous. I could build one rail here and one rail here. And you could see this spot has one hazard condition and this one has two. So one, two, three total. So a base cost of 400 plus an additional three, this total action would be $700 to take. Again, there is no blocking, so the red player could also add a rail link here as long as you're expanding your network. Uh, that's the only requirement. Let's take a look at some of the bonus actions. If I took this action instead of white with a purple, I could pay 300 and immediately take a train tile. Again, remember, there's no limit to the number of train tiles I can have, and I can have multiples of the same type. They come into my supply face up, ready for use. If I use the orange worker, I'm basically getting a discount on the core action. So it would only cost me, I'm getting 100 to the base, and a 50 rebate for each terrain tile. So in effect, I only pay a base cost of 300 and then 50 for each train I build. I'm sorry, for each rail I, for each mountain that my rail links are on. The gray worker just gave me two Western Union shares. And the blue worker allows me to actually place three rails. Uh, so the base cost would still be the same. It would be the 400, but I get to place three rails and then, as always, for each hazard icon, I pay the additional amount. At the end of the railroad action, I may have triggered a deal. So let's talk about those. If I laid a rail, let's say I was building from here. I'd have to lay this one first, then this one. But let's say I also laid this one on this turn. It has this deal icon. So we basically trigger the current deal. So the player that triggers the deal, this happens at the end of resolving the actions, the player that triggered the deal has the option to take neither 
one of the two or both. Um, and it's always, you've got to turn in shares. These represent entrepreneurs that are interested in investing in the Western Union. You've got to turn in one of your Western Union shares to take the action on the right. Here you've got to turn in four of your shares to get a purple and an orange worker. So the person that play, triggers the deal has the option of taking both, then going clockwise from the player that triggered, all other players get, get the option of one of the two options. They can take the top one or the bottom one by paying the appropriate shares. Then this gets just put discarded onto the bottom of the stack, and then we'd reveal the next deal that's active. The next action is the Western Union action. So let's say I, let's say it's a subsequent turn. I decide to place a worker here. The Western Union action, I take my leftmost station and I can place it on any of the Western Union slots where I don't already have a station. Now if I'm placing it here, I won't get the first station bonus, whereas here I would. The benefit for placing on the Western Union track, first, there's no cost. It doesn't cost any money to place a station, and you're always gaining shares. So in this case, you're going to gain two shares. If I'm the first, play, first person to place, I'd gain an additional two shares, so I would get four total. If I placed here instead, I would get three shares. I don't qualify for the additional. So you're always earning shares, uh, even the ones without the tile, uh, by placing a station here. The base bonus is you get two shares. If you're the first one, you get an additional. So you're always earning Western Union shares by placing here. In addition, you now have the option of taking uh, the action on the Western Union tile. All the tiles require you to discard a worker of your choice, any color. Uh, they get removed from the game. So you've got to make sure you at least have five workers to do this, because remember, you can never go below four, and then you discard the worker and then take the corresponding benefit on the tile, and that's optional. Just like with the cities, you can only have one of your station on each of these, so once you come here, you're not allowed to come here again, so you only get one chance to get this benefit and access this tile. At the end of the game, there are victory points for having tiles adjacent to this victory point marker. So if I had a station here and a station here, I would get eight. A station here and a station here, I would get five. If I only had a station here, but not one here, I'm not eligible for that victory point. Let's look at the bonuses for this one. If I used instead of this or a subsequent turn to come here with a purple worker, I could exchange any of my workers for another color. And that can be one that's on my board or one that's in my supply. If I came here with an orange, I would get $100 times the number of shares that I got on that action. So if I placed here and I got three shares, I would get an additional $300 if I used an orange worker. If I actually placed here and used an orange worker, you see I collected four shares because I got the first player bonus. So I would get $400 for each of those shares I took, or 100 each. If you take, use a gray worker, you're able to get the first station bonus, even if it was blocked. So here I would get the four shares. Or if it wasn't blocked, I can get that bonus twice. So if I placed here and used a gray worker, I would get two and two, four, and then an additional two. So I would get a total of six in this example by using the gray worker. And then here, if I use the blue worker, I can pay $400 to take the uh, Western Union tile bonus. So I don't have to discard the worker. I could actually pay $400 and get the benefit. In this case, it's a train tile. Now, you can use this um, in lieu of discarding the worker or in addition. So if I came here with a turquoise worker, I could... Uh, discard a worker, get the bonus, and because I used the blue worker, I could do it again by paying the 400. 
at the end of a Western Union action, this is the second way that a deal could be triggered. If a station was placed here, there's this spot and this spot. So there's two spots on the Western Union track that have the deal icon. We go through the same procedure. So this deal is triggered. The player that triggered it has the option of doing neither one or both. And then going clockwise, each player can do either the top or the bottom by paying the Western Union shares. So deals get triggered by placing stations with deal icons here or by placing rails that have deal icons on the board. The final action is the trade action. If you place a worker here, in any order, um, you can sell either a station or a rail. It has to come from your leftmost section. These are sections with the dollar amounts. So I could not sell this station because my leftmost section is this one. This has to get sold. Now, if I had a station and a rail available in this section, then it's my choice what I choose to give up. So depending on what you choose to sell, you get the amount there. You can see it goes up to 1,000 for the final section. You get that immediately from the bank. And then, or if you want to do this first, you can flip one of your train tiles. So you can flip a train tile if it's face up to get the benefit, or if it was face down, you could flip it face up to reset it. So the trade action, you get a sell, take the amount, and then flip one of your trains. Here are the bonuses. If we use the purple worker, we can move up three spots on the tracks. Again, you can split that any way you see fit. Um, if you use the orange worker, you earn 100 for each train tile you own, whether it's face up or face down. So in this example, I only owe one. So if I used an orange worker, I'd get an additional 100 for the train tile I had, face up or face down. The negotiator allows me to take one of the current deals available. So I'd look at the current deal tile. I could take either the top one or the bottom one. In addition, I get a Western Union share. I could apply that to the cost, because remember, you can always do this in any order. And then once my decision is made, this would get discarded and a new one would get revealed. The other players don't get a chance. This is exclusive for me if I use a gray worker. And then finally, if I use a blue worker, I get an additional train flip. And it could be the same one that you flipped here. So you could flip this over and then a blue worker, I could flip it back to reset it. And then always remember, a worker can be used, any color worker can be used to trigger the promotion action. Uh, if it's white, that's the only you're eligible for. If you use a color, uh, one of the color workers, you can choose to do this instead of the other bonus. This lets you promote one of your workers from anywhere in your supply, on your board or out here, and place it immediately on one of the milestone tiles. If at the end of your turn, or actually another player's turn, maybe it was through a deal action, um, you have the worker promoted to management, and you've met the condition on the milestone tile, you get to satisfy it, flip it over, you'll get those victory points at the end of the game, and now you get to draw new milestone tiles from the next deck. So since this is an A tile, I'd flip it over, I get to draw three tiles from the B deck and choose which one I want to keep. The, the two I don't pick just get placed under the deck. So if I satisfied a B milestone, I would be drawing from the C deck. And likewise, if I complete a C milestone, I draw from the D deck. If I complete a D milestone, uh, there, is no, there is no E deck, so I would not be getting an additional milestone after I complete this. Also, uh, there is no limit to the number of milestones I can be working on. And I can also promote a worker to the milestone even before I've satisfied this. I can promote the worker and then I'm still working on getting two rails on a three black terrain track. Here are some examples of some milestones. They always require workers to be promoted. Here that means they can be of any color, including white, were promoted here. Um, and it always has to deal with getting stuff on the board. So this requires you to have rails in two 
of these spots. So maybe one here and one here. In this example, you need rails, you need three rails in the plane spots. So there's one, if you had one there, there's a second one, and then there's a third one. And here you'd have to have rails in three of the spots with deal icons. Here, you'd have to have rails connected to three different level four cities. Here, you'd have to have uh, three rails connected to, or connected, rails connected to three different level five cities. Here, you need at least a station in a level four city, and then you need two stations or a station in two different level one cities. Now, to satisfy this, you would need this, 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 and the workers promoted. Play is going to continue clockwise until at least one player has cleared all the rails and all the trains to the left of their company logo. Once that happens, that triggers the game end. That player would finish their turn, and then you'd ensure that all players got an equal number of turns. So since I'm the first player, all players after me would get, um, to, get to complete the round. Then all players would get one final uh, turn. So once the game end is triggered, you'll finish that round, and then all players will get their final turn, and then you'll add up final scores. You'll add up points for each of the performance tracks. So based on points that you're at, you would get that number of points multiplied by the number of West Coast cities or level five cities that your rails connected to. Here you would get points multiplied by the number of stations that you've built on the board. That's this middle track. So you can see up to nine points per station built on the board. Here you'd get points for each of the stations built on the Western Union track multiplied by the victory point total that you were able to get up to. Keep in mind on these performance tracks as you move up it may require you to pay money to move to the next level. So to get here you would have to pay 50. To go here you would have to discard a share or to get to this level you'd have to discard a worker out of your supply. So you get points multiplied by your location on the track You'll also add up any milestone victory points that you got. Any face-up train tiles will score you eight points each. If they were face down, you won't get the victory points. And then finally, you'd earn your adjacency bonuses if you had stations surrounding a victory point total. You would then tally up the points. Most victory points wins if there's a tie. Uh, most money wins the game, and keep in mind, Western Union shares are worth 150 each. All right, finally, let's cover all the iconography on the city tiles, the deal tiles, the train tiles, and the Western Union uh, tiles. So first, the city tiles. Uh, always remember, you've got two pre-printed on the board, and always remember the left side is the first station bonus, and the right side is the primary bonus for everyone who puts a station there. So two track movements, a gray or an orange worker, two shares from the Western Union, purple or a blue worker. Here you can pay 200 to promote up to two workers to milestones, purple and an orange worker, Pay 100 to get a train tile, gray and a blue worker. One track movement and you can promote one worker. Three track movements. You can flip one of your train tiles. Get one worker of your choice. You can convert any one worker into any other worker anywhere on your player board or in your supply. Three track movements. You get one Western Union share, and you can promote one worker to a milestone. Get one worker of your choice. You can pay 200 to get a train tile, blue or an orange worker. You can pay 50 to flip one train tile, purple or a gray worker. Here you can exchange any one worker for another worker. Two track movements. 
one track movement, purple worker, pay 200 to get a worker of your choice, blue worker, pay 300 to get a train tile, orange worker, pay 100 to flip a train tile, gray worker. Next are the deal tiles. Um, remember, whoever triggers the deal has the option to do zero, one, or both of the available deals. And normally all other players with the option have the option to do one or the other. To do the top one, you've got to discard one share. To do the bottom one, you've got to discard four shares of the Western Union. So let's take a look at these. Uh, flip one of your train tiles, a blue and a gray worker. Pay 200 for a purple worker, for track movements. You can promote up to two workers to milestones. For each one that you do, pay 100. Three track movements. Convert any worker to another. Here you can place a rail on the board. The red X means you don't have to worry about any terrain costs, but you also do not uh, trigger any deals when you do this. Pay 200 to get a train tile. Place a station on the Western Union track. Um, again, you don't have to pay any costs. You're not going to take any bonuses, though. You're not going to get any shares, nor would you trigger any deals with that. Pay 200 to get a gray worker. Take a train tile. Pay 200 to get a blue worker. Place a station uh, in a city. You don't have to worry about paying the normal station costs, but you're also not going to take uh, any benefits from laying the station. And then finally, two track movements, a purple and an orange worker. Oh, there's one more down here. Uh, pay 200 to get an orange worker, and you can flip two of your train tiles. Uh, they can be the different, or you can flip the same one twice. Okay, let's look at, the, look at the train tiles. So when you flip them and they're face up, you can get the benefit. Uh, this is your starting tile for each player. It allows you to promote up to two workers, two milestones, three track movements, three Western Union shares, $600. And here you can place a rail on the board by paying 100. Again, uh, you don't pay any additional things for terrain nor do you trigger any deal icons. Uh, this is the same as this one up here. Yeah, for any of these here, you're just literally placing pieces on the board. You're not paying any extra costs, nor are you triggering any bonuses like shares or getting access to the, uh, the normal Western Union tile. And here are those Western Union telegraph tiles. Remember, uh, when you place a station on the Western Union track, uh, you've got the option of doing this reward by discarding a worker. Um, if you discard a worker, here you would get a train tile. You could do two train flips, four track movements, $600, promote up to two workers, and again, lay a track on the board. No terrain costs, but it triggers no deals. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Railroad Revolution.